So if you're clicking on this video, there's a chance you may want to learn how to do rigging, in particular, how to rig a character in Blender. In this tutorial, I'm going to take everything I've learned doing character tutorials, especially rigging, all the mistakes I've made, all the things that people specifically ask, and I'm going to try and make a very beginner-friendly video on how to make a rig from scratch. Now, Blender has a lot of cool tools out there that can kind of do this for you, roughly, but really it is helpful to learn how all of this works. So you kind of understand it. This is gonna be a fundamental thing that you can use, especially if you wanna get into characters and creatures and stuff like that. So everything you see here, we're gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna explain every little thing. So if you're a beginner, you've never done rigging, but you're still messing around with Blender, this is gonna be a video that I have specifically tried to make as simple as possible. I'm gonna not only show you how to set up all the rigs, um, all the bones, but how to specifically only make everything on one side and then mirror it over automatically with some cool nifty tools in Blender over to the other side. I'm gonna teach you about the proper extensions. I'm gonna teach you how to use cool little constraints so we can add control bones that affect different parts of um, the rig so we don't have to like come in here and you know little by little do this kind of like animation like this we have these cool little tools in here that just allow us to work a lot more dynamically when we're animating um, I'm going to show you guys some what the difference is between um, inverse kinematics and forward kinematics um, how to use um, targets to help things out and I'm going to be keeping it really simple like I said so I don't want to go rambling too much in this intro I just really want you guys to understand that this is going to be the tutorial for you if you want to get into rigging if you want to understand how it works if you want it to make sense and if you're still learning if you're new to this sort of thing so let's jump into it and rig up our little character. Just a quick note, you can use your own character, but I'm gonna quickly spend the first few minutes just showing you guys where you can get a character. If you don't have one, if you do have one, just skip to the part in the video where I start the rigging so you don't have to waste time getting the one that I'm gonna present. So let's jump into it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna show you where you can get a free character if you don't have one and you wanna follow along. So this site here is called Adobe Mixamo. Um, all you have to do is just go um, www mixamo.com it'll come up with it and you're going to go to the character section once you've created a free account and uh, just scroll down and you're going to get the one here that's the mannequin it's just one piece of mesh and once you click on it you can just go use this character now with adobe mixamo the cool thing is it actually kind of creates a rig for your character and adds motion data to it. But this is kind of like a very basic rig and doesn't give you any controls. So we're not gonna worry about the animation here. We're just gonna click on the mannequin and we're gonna go to download and we're just gonna leave everything as it is and leave it in a T pose, which is the default here anyway, and the FBX. And we're just gonna go download. Now I've already done this, okay? So I'm just gonna cancel this, right? And this was the downloaded file right here. So then you're gonna go and you're gonna open Blender real quick. And you're just gonna to go to file, you're gonna to go to import, choose the FBX option, then go to your desktop, wherever you downloaded that FBX to, click on that FBX, and here you can see it's been imported. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, select this guy here, and because it, we wanna create our own rig, we're just gonna go Alt P, and we're gonna go clear and keep transform. We just wanna clear any parent. So this doesn't have any relation to the rig that it comes with. And then we're gonna just delete that rig. And we're also gonna um, select the character. We're gonna go S and just scale them a little bit bigger. So it's about this big relative to the cube. We're gonna go Control A or Command A and we're gonna apply the scale. That's really important. Um, we want all of the transforms to be set. We can also go Control A and apply that rotation. Okay, so if you now press N to bring up your properties panel and you go to item, you should see that the scale values here are all set to one and there shouldn't be anything under rotation because we've applied those um, vectors. We're then gonna select the default cube and just delete it. And the same with the objects in the scene. We just want our character here. Now, if you tab into edit mode by pressing tab, you can see it's quite a high um, dense mesh here. What I'm gonna do is with everything active, just press A to select everything. I'm gonna type in F3 and I'm gonna search on and then sub and I click on mesh on subdivide. Okay, now it's a little bit messy, but it's just to demonstrate here. Now it's a bit lower topology and uh, you can keep the material. I'm just gonna hit Z and go material preview. You can see this guy here comes with a material. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that because we're just doing um, the practice here for the rigging. So now we have a character 
Um, if you skip this bit to do your own character, that's fine. Just for those of you who didn't have a character, now you have one. Make sure to go and save this somewhere on your computer. I'm just going to call it something appropriate for me and I'm going to save it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our armature, but just a quick note, just in case um, you might not be aware of this if you're an absolute beginner, um, make sure that your character is in the middle of the scene. Now, thankfully, this one came imported in the right position. If your character is off to the side, we're going to be adding in the armature right here where that 3D cursor is. So make sure everything is nice and lined up in your front view and in your side orthographic view like this. Okay. In this case, it should be fine. We're also going to make sure that our 3D cursor is also in the middle. So Shift S and cursor to world origin. Okay, just a few things you want to be sure of. So it's nice and in the middle because we're working with symmetry here. We're now going to go Shift A and we're going to go down to this option here called armature. We're just going to click on that. It's going to add in a single bone over here. Right now, it's important to note that this bone in our object mode, if you actually go up here to your scene collection, this is actually a system. It's a collection of bones that are contained inside of this thing here called the armature. Okay. And if you go down under the armature drop in, you can see there's currently just one bone listed. And if you actually go into edit mode or you just press tab to get into edit mode, you can now see that if you click on armature, it's not selecting anything because that's the whole system. But if you click on bone, it selects that bone. And if you go over here to the bone properties, you can actually see this is the name of the bone here. So if we call this um, main, which I'm going to do, so call it main. This is our main control bone. You can now see over here it's called main. And if you actually go up to your object properties, you can see that this is called armature. Now make sure when you're renaming a bone that you don't actually go to this one up here or this one up here. This is the overall system name here. That's what we call the armature. You can call it whatever you want, but what we're interested in when we're naming is naming these individual bones underneath this group called armature. Okay, if that makes sense. So let's now take this main bone over here. Let's select this top nub at the top. You can actually click on that nub and select it. I'm going to go G, Z and bring it down so our bone is a little bit smaller. We're then going to click on this bone and we're going to go Shift D to duplicate. You can right click to let go and then you can go G to move it. And if you press Z after you've pressed G, you can limit it to the Z location. But you can see now it's um, we can't really see it inside of our character. I've moved it up in there. If you go Z and you go wireframe, you can see that. Another thing you can do is if you're in solid mode, it's just enable the X-ray here, which is what I'm going to do. You could also, and I'll quickly mention this in case you don't know, let's just say you were in solid. You can go over to your object data properties. You can go over to viewport display and you can go in front. And it doesn't matter where you're looking from. Your bones will always be in front of the mesh or whatever you're working with. I'm going to turn that off and I'm just going to rely on the X-ray over here. If you want to toggle that on and off, you can go Alt Z and then go Alt Z again. And that's just a shortcut for that. In X-ray mode now, let's take this new bone and that's just called main.001. Let's now come here. Let's go to our bones and let's just call this hip because this is going to be our hip bone. We're just going to go G, Z and move it down until it's sitting more around here. We're going to select that top nub and we're going to go G, Z and bring it down. Now, if you're making a more complex rig, generally I would have it like this. So we can rotate the hip because this is where it's actually going to be pivoting. But we're trying to keep things a little bit simpler here. So we're just going to leave it as it is for now in this case. So about here and we now have a hip bone and we're going to go into a right orthographic view by pressing free on a number pad. And we're going to select this top nub and we're going to go G and move it forward. OK, something like this because we have this curvature in the spine. Now, currently, if we were to go into our pose mode where we would control these bones and we selected our main rig or our main um, control bone, as you can see here under our pose, because over here now we're in the pose mode. So this is um, a little bit different the way you select things. So if you select the main bone, you can see if we move that, the other thing doesn't go along. So we need to actually fix that. Let's go back into edit mode, select our hip. We're now going to hold in shift and then click on our main bone. And if you now go control P, you can go make parent and click on keep offset. Now you're going to see this is black line. And if we were to go into our pose mode and select that main bone under our pose, you can now see that that bone goes along. In fact, you can actually see that the main bone here under the pose 
now has a little drop down, which means that the hip is now a parent or child of this main bone. And that's called a hierarchy. That's gonna be very important when we're working with bones, okay? So let's quickly go back into edit mode. We're now going to select this nub here at the top. And in our right orthographic view, we're gonna move it up just a little bit. And we're now gonna go E to extrude, and we're gonna extrude it about halfway here. Then we're gonna click on this new bone, come here to our drop down, and you can see it's now under hip because it's been extruded from the hip bone. So it is under the hip. This has hierarchy, hierarchical structure over this new bone. And let's just double click on that bone. And let's call it spine underscore one. You can also just come here and click on the bone um, properties and just name it that way if it's easier. We're now gonna select this nub up here and we're gonna go E to extrude. And let's just, um, so we could either just make this the chest, which I'm gonna actually do in this case. But there's sometimes if I'm rigging, if I was making a more advanced rig, I would actually use bendy bones and there would be a whole bunch of little segments in here to kind of act like vertebrae. But for now, let's just call that, um, this one over here that we called spine. Let's just call it spine. Let's have one spine bone, okay? Just to keep things simple for beginners. And let's select this bone here now, the new one that we've extruded, and let's just call it um, chest. Okay, that's the chest bone. And we're gonna take this one, maybe select a nub here at the bottom and just move it up just a little bit and then move this one over here in the middle. Okay, so if you now go to your front orthographic view by pressing one on the number pad, you can see everything is nice and in the middle and in the side, it's looking nice and curved. We're gonna now select this top nub on the chest bone. We're gonna go E to extrude and this is gonna be our neck. So let's click on that. Let's go over here and call it neck and then select the top nub and you can kind of see where we're going with this. We're gonna go E to extrude and extrude it up. And we're gonna click on that new bone and let's call it head. So now we have a bunch of bones here. And if you were to go into pose mode and select this main bone here and go G, you can see everything has the hierarchy structure to that. And if you were to select this hip bone and you go R to rotate it or G to move it, you can see the other bones that have been extruded from it are um, under its control. Um, this is called forward kinematics because you'd be working your way up the chain of bones if you wanted to animate something, right? You'd have to go select each one and then control it that way. Now there is something called IK, which is where we add a controller and it's inverse kinematics. And we're gonna get to that in a little while, but just so you understand what's going on here, okay? We have a hierarchical structure going on. That's very important to get when you're a beginner. Let's go back to our edit mode. And what we're gonna do is everything so far has been in the middle, but we're gonna now start modeling only on one side and then we're gonna mirror it over. But naming is gonna be important here, the extensions that we use. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select our main bone down here in the front of a graphic view and go Shift D to duplicate it and just move it all the way up here. And we're gonna go R and we're gonna rotate it out this way so the fat end is at the bottom here. And we're gonna move that in and we're gonna grab this bit here. We're gonna go G and move it in. Now, some people, when they're making a really simple rig, would just start the arm here and this would be your lower arm bone. But I'm gonna make this a clavicle. Okay, so I'm gonna place it right here and under my bone properties, I'm just gonna call it clav for clavicle. And then I'm gonna go into my right orthographic view and I'm gonna select this nub here. I'm gonna go G and move it more to the middle of the arm. And that's our clavicle. Now the problem is if we go back to pose mode, if we now move our main bone, you can see that no longer has a connection there. So what we need to do is select this clavicle in edit mode and holding in shift, select our chest bone and then go control P and then go keep offset. Now this is parented to the chest bone, okay? Now we can select this nub here and we can move it to over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna extrude it to the middle here. And then we're gonna go to our top orthographic view by pressing seven on a number pad and we're gonna move it back a little bit. We want it in the middle of the arm here. And then we're gonna go E to extrude, move it to where the wrist is. And then E to extrude and that's gonna be the hand. Now we're not gonna be making fingers in this one here. Let's keep it basic just for, um, so you can understand the basic concepts. So let's just select this hand bone in the top view and go G and move it over here. And then select this little nub and straighten things out. Now, if you were gonna make fingers, you would simply just duplicate a bone and then place it here where the fingers are and extrude a whole bunch more like this and then parent that to the hand, right? 
So that's kind of what you do. It's pretty simple, but for now, I'm not gonna um, go that way. I'm just gonna delete that. So make sure also in the front view that all looks okay. And what we have here is the clav. If you look over here under the bone properties, let's just call this one over here, upper arm. And this is gonna be very, very important. Dot capital L. Now it's very important that it is a capital. If you do small letter L, it won't work. If you do comma L, if you do underscore L, it won't work. It has to be dot, the period on your keyboard, capital L. Now this might be to your right as you're looking at the screen, but it's actually the left side of the character and that's why we're doing dot L. Make sure you don't get that confused. A lot of people who are in their beginners kind of get that mixed up. We're gonna also select the clavicle and put a dot capital L next to it. Then we're gonna select the lower arm and we're gonna go lower arm and then dot capital L. It doesn't really matter what you name these bones, but the dot capital L is super, super important. We're then gonna go and select the hand and let's call it hand dot capital L. Okay, so now all of these have the extension dot capital L and later on we can mirror it over automatically and it'll automatically name it appropriately, appropriately with the dot capital R. We'll get to that in a little while. So let's quickly go into pose mode and I'll show you something. At this point, if we wanted to animate this later on, we'd have to go for each bone and work our way down the chain, okay? And that's not something we wanna do. We wanna work a little bit more efficiently. So let's set up a simple IK. So we're gonna go back to edit mode and we're gonna select this nub over here behind the hand. And in a front view, we're gonna go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up into Z. Then we're gonna select this bone and we're gonna go Alt P because it's gonna be a control bone. We want it to be separate and we're gonna go disconnect bone. And then we're gonna go Alt P and we're gonna go clear parent. We don't want it to have any relationship to the bones around it. And then we're gonna take this bone over here, the hand bone, and we're gonna hold in shift and select that IK bone and go control P and go keep offset, okay? So now if we go into pose mode, we can select this bone here and go G to move it, R to rotate it. But the problem here, even though that is controlling our hand bone, it's not controlling the rest of the arm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this IK, holding in shift, we're gonna select the lower arm bone. Then if you go control shift and C or command shift and C, you're gonna go here and select inverse kinematic. Now this bone has, um, power over this bone here. So let's select this lower arm bone. Let's go over to our object constraints. Sorry, I meant to say the, um, the bone constraint properties. And now we wanna go and increase the chain length. So now if we go one, it increases to this one bone. If we move it up the chain, this now has control two bones down the chain, which is this bone. And if you went three, it would be this one and so on, up the hierarchy. But what we're gonna do is now select this control bone G to move it, and you can now see this is what we have. It's controlling those two bones and the hand. Now, by the way, if you move anything in pose mode, all you have to do is go A to select everything, and then Alt G to reset anything you've moved, and Alt R to reset anything you've rotated, or Alt S if you've scaled anything. Okay, the main thing is, is that in pose edit mode, and when we move something, that's um, a bit more permanent. So now we have an IK here. Right. The thing is as well, just quickly back in pose mode, if we were to actually select our chest here and rotate it, you can see that hand goes nowhere. And if we selected the main bone here and went G to move it in pose mode, it's even worse. His hand's just gonna be floating there. So let's go back to edit mode. Let's select that IK bone and holding in shift, select the chest, then go control P and then go keep offset. Now back in pose mode, you can see if we grab the chest and rotate it, now that is a lot more appropriate. We could actually move the hand, then select the chest and move it, and that'll still move. So press A to select everything, Alt G, Alt R, to set those transforms back. So this is a little bit complicated, maybe if you're a beginner, but remember, we can actually parent all of this over to the other side when we're done. So it's not too big of a deal. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're just gonna be doing it now with the leg, which is pretty much just as simple and then we'll go on to parent it all over. So now that we're in edit mode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually select our hip bone here in the front orthographic view in edit mode. We're gonna go shift D to duplicate and move it over. Then we're gonna select the top pointy part. We're gonna point it down, remember? Because this is actually the bit that's pivoting. 
where it's pivoting. And instead of pointing it down like that, let's just select a whole bone and then go R to rotate it. Or before we even rotate it, let's just go into our right orthographic view and let's just straighten that out a little bit. And uh, then bring that knob down. Okay, it's just so it doesn't twist as much. Now this is gonna be our top bone. Okay, so we're gonna put the top bit here. And then our right orthographic view, we're gonna bring it a little bit more in the middle. Then we're gonna select the bottom knob, right? And I'm gonna go G and bring that down to the knees. And in the right orthographic view, I'm just gonna bring it more forward. Now you don't want it more back or too much in the middle. You want it a little bit more forward. So there's kind of like a, a V, a little bit of a bend, a delta. And then you're gonna go E and you're gonna extrude that knob down to where the ankle is and then go to your front view and then go G and make sure to match that up like so. Now you can see these bones are a little bit um, twisted. So if you actually select the bone and you go control R, you can actually rotate it if you just went R by itself, this would happen. So go Control R and just rotate it just so it straightens out a little bit. And you can do the exact same thing with this bone here. Control R and just rotate it a little bit. Now it's just a little bit neater, like so. So now let's um, take this bone at the top. I might move it down just a little bit more. Let's select this top bone and let's call that leg or maybe even upper leg dot capital L. The dot capital L is really important. Then select the lower leg and go lower leg dot capital L. Okay. And then select the bottom nub here. And let's just uh, maybe move it down even a bit more to where the ankle um, would be. That's not really the ankle. And then go E to extrude. And um, usually I would make a two part foot like this. But what I'm going to do here, just for simplicity's sake, let's just, this bone that we've extruded, let's just move that out and that'll be our foot. Okay? Um, so this one here, I'm just going to select as well and go Control R and just rotate it just to straighten it out just a little bit. And let's name that um, foot dot capital L. So now we have all of these named. But let's also just select that back and middle knob here. And let's go E to extrude and Y and extrude one out into Y. And I'm also going to just go control R of that one, just rotate it out a little bit. This is going to be our IK. So let's just come here and call that foot underscore IK dot capital L. Because that's going to be our control. Just like this one up here is going to be our, um, oh, we haven't actually named the, the hand bone here, right? Let's make sure to do that. Let's just call that hand underscore IK dot capital L. You don't have to call it IK, it just helps to remember. But the dot capital L is always really important. So now we have our two IK bones here. Um, with the one down here at the foot, let's go Alt P to disconnect the bone and Alt P to clear that parent. We don't want it to have any relationship with the bones here. And we also want to take this bone here at the top, the upper leg bone, and holding in shift after selecting that one, click on the hip, Control P and go and then go make parent keep offset. We're also gonna select this IK bone down here, holding in shift, select the main control bone afterwards, go control P and go keep offset. So now if we go into our pose mode, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna select our IK bone, holding in shift afterwards, select the lower leg bone and go control shift C or command shift C and go inverse kinematic and now this bone here has dominance over this bone. So now let's select that yellow bone, go to the bones constraints, and let's make it two on the chain length so it affects two bones up the chain. So if we now grab this in pose mode and we go G, you can see those two bones go along. We can also just go back into edit mode quickly and then select our foot bone, holding in shift, select our IK, Control P and go make parent, keep offset. Our little character rig is really coming along. You know, you grab that hip, you can test it, grab the main control, you know, rotate the chest. You can, you know, mess around with the IK here on the arm. All sorts of really cool stuff. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly add in some target bones so you can control the rotation of the knee. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to control it. Um, you can do the same thing with your arms, but we'll just do it with the knees here because it's oftentimes very important when you're working with the legs. So let's just quickly go back in to edit mode. I'm just going to select this nub over here. I'm going to go E to extrude and then Y 
I'm going to just extrude forward onto Y. Then with that bone, we're going to go Alt P and we're going to go disconnect bone and Alt P clear parent. And then go G, Y and move it forward about that much. And let's go to our bone um, constraint or bone properties. And let's just call that leg target dot capital L. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our pose mode. We're going to select this bone over here that we added the constraint to. Let's go over to our bone constraints and let's get a pull target, click on this little eyedropper and then select our armature. So that tells us the system we're using and then let's find that bone. So that is our leg and we called it leg target.l and let's click on that. Now, not only can we grab this IK and control the bone, the, the leg, we can also use this guy here. Now you'd notice that there's an issue of the rotation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this bone here and we just have to come here to the pull angle and make it 90 and press enter. And that should be correct for the rotation. So we can now come here and you can see, um, this gives us a lot more control over the direction of our leg, okay? Now, um, this is a little bit of homework for you guys. You can do the exact same pull target thing with the arm and put the um, target at the back here the exact same way we just did that. So that's gonna be a bit of homework for you guys. Um, the exact same way we just did that with the legs. So you call it leg target, and you'd go in there and add it as a target with this lower arm here. Okay, so now you kind of get where we're going with this. I'm gonna press A to select everything, Alt G, Alt R, and Alt S, and uh, make sure that everything is named appropriately. Everything has a .L extension. One thing we're gonna quickly do though, before we go on to parenting or uh, mirroring all of this over to the other side, is we gotta tell Blender what objects we want to affect the mesh and what objects we don't. So you can see all of these bones in here, they're our deformation bones. And if I was working professionally in the industry, um, like I used to, I would call these DEF underscore and then a name. And that's just kind of like the industry standard for like deformation bones. And anything that is a control bone would be CON underscore and that would be your control bones. And usually your control bones don't have any sort of deformation effect on your geometry. So if that sounds complicated, essentially we just don't want any of these bones that are not inside of the mesh here or not doing anything except controlling the deformation bones to not have deformation. So a simple way to do that is to select the bones, like for example, the main bone here, go to the bone properties, and then just go and untick the form, okay? So any of the IK bones, like the one here on the foot, untick the form. The one here on the hand, untick the form. And then the pull target is also just a control, so we can untick the form for that as well. All of the bones that are inside of the mesh here, they need to be deformed, because once we parent this, we want our mesh here to automatically add these um, vertex groups. Now, um, I'm just gonna go ahead, in fact, while we're here quickly, just make sure you're in pose mode and select the character, mesh. Just come here to the drop down. If you use the same character that I'm using, just come to the drop down here under the vertex groups, under the object data properties, and just go delete all groups. Because this is just some of this junk that came in from the old rig when we imported this from Mixamo, right? We just want a blank slate there. So we're gonna be anything here that is gonna be parented any of these boats, bones that are gonna have an effect on this mesh, this mesh here will have a bunch of vertex groups that tell these bones what bits of the geometry to use. But we're gonna do that automatically. So if that sounds complicated, don't worry. Um, Blender has is gonna do that pretty good right out of the box for us with just a click of a button. So let's go back into our rig. Let's go into edit mode. And at this point, um, we can now go in our front orthographic view and select all of the bones that have the .l extension. So all of these bones here, you can hold and shift, click on any ones that aren't selected. And in our front of a graphic, just so we can see it nicely, now go to armature and then go symmetrize. And now every single bone should be symmetrized like this. We can now go into pose mode and just test this. You can see here, okay, that's all working cool. This one works, this one works here. Really, really cool stuff. Now, if you grab the main control, you can see that these um, target bones are left behind. So let's just quickly go into edit mode. Just hold and shift and select both of these target bones. And while you're still holding and shift, select the main control, control P and then go keep offset. 
Now back in pose mode, we can kind of see if we grab our hip here, okay. Everything stays there. We can control our head, we can rotate our chest, our spine, our hip. Once again, keep in mind, this is not usually how you do a hip, but for simplicity's sake, that's how we're doing it. We can grab a foot, we can rotate it, we can move it. Okay, everything is looking really good here. So now let's go into object mode. Let's undo our x-ray toggle. We don't need to see that. Our x-ray mode here. And let's now select the mesh. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold in shift and select our armature in object mode. And if you now go control P, you're gonna go now to with automatic weights. And just in a second, if you now select your armature or your character under the object data properties, you're gonna see all of these bones that we named now are automatically given access to certain parts of this character mesh. And we can now actually select our armature and then go into pose mode. And now, let's just turn X-ray on quickly. Now, if you select your control bones, look at that. Now you can see things are a little bit messy here. We'll get into that in a while, in a little bit, some of these deformations, but overall, Blender did a really good job at doing this kind of right out of the box, right? You can see here, look at that. So congratulations if you've made your first rig this way. Remember, if you've moved anything, just go A to select it all, Alt G, Alt R, and if you've scaled, just go Alt S, which I haven't, so I'm not doing that. But you can see here, it all works. So let's quickly go back into object mode. And this video is getting a bit long, so I'll quickly cover this. If you select your armature, and then holding in shift, you select the mesh, you can now go and go into weight paint. And if you hold in control and left click on any of these bones, you can actually see the weight. Now the warmer a color is, the more influence that bone has on the mesh. And the cooler it is, the less that is. And you can go control, holding it in, click on all the other bones, and you get the idea here. So what you can do now is you can actually just control left click on a bone. Then you can come to all of these painting tools here, and you can go to draw, for example. You can increase the strength, the weight, and you can go F to grow the brush, just like you can do with any other brush in Blender. And at this point, you can come in here and you can kind of weight paint and make warmer the areas that you want this to have more influence on, right? And this is pretty self-explanatory. So for example, if I go control, left click on this bone here, I might wanna go and go subtract and paint away some of this influence here so it doesn't affect, the neck bone doesn't affect the head as much. Um, so yeah, pretty simple stuff, but this is not really what the video is about. This is more about learning how to use, um, in fact, if you go um, control and left click on any of these control bones, you can see the mesh just goes pink because we turned off deformation, so it didn't create any groups for that. So now you guys kind of see how all of this works. There's no magic going on here. It's just really good um, tools built into Blender. So I hope you guys have understood this tutorial that you kind of like the basics of it and I hope you can really like this video and it's been a help to you. If you want to um, support the channel, you can support me on Patreon and you can check out some of my content on Skillshare. All of that is in the description below. Um, you can even sign up for free for one month to my Skillshare classes and I have a lot of really cool Blender stuff on there that's um, been really popular on Skillshare. So feel free to check that out in the description below. Let's go back into object mode. Um, I'll be uploading this example to my Patreon anyway. But yeah, that has been the tutorial and I'll see you guys next time for a, another one.